All right, now, the video that we're going to be stepping into is going to be showing you something about this air conditioner. Now, one of the things that I want to show you is that this covers most all air conditioners in the window, through the wall, uh, partially, uh, all-in-one units, you name it, and even can be referred to to some of your outdoor condensing units that are two-stage. This is a big deal, okay? The air conditioning industry, and in they're never done the job before wisestness started to sell or design air conditioners that sealed up in the bottom and re literally required this to be flooded, okay, so that all your condensate water, in their wisest uneducated third grade level view, they thought it was brilliant that you would be taking the water and spinning the fan and using much more amperage because when if you don't know, try to just push a, slow a fan down and watch the amp meter raise on your on your watt meter and you'll realize that's what the water's doing, okay? One of the things that we're missing here is the fact that it sounds great, and if you build a brand new air conditioner and you put nice distilled water in the bottom of it and you do that, its effect is a 4% four, four, four reduction in power. However, most people don't use their air conditioner with distilled water, which was used in their testing for the air conditioning um, eggheads. And most people put their air conditioner where this part is outdoors, not in a laboratory. So the result for most people, and I'm going to go with most people as being everybody but them people. They're going to be where dust and dirt and everything gets into this air conditioning unit because their design sucks. One of the things they have is they have this ducting system on the top, and what that does is creates an unnecessary turbulence. But if you put a dome or a scoop, like a hood scoop on that, it increases airflow, and I have done this test with a watt meter, and drops 7 watts of power, because everything that restricts that fan is power loss. Okay, a dirty air filter, this being plugged, it's all power loss. Well, over time, one of these air conditioners, when you get the sticker that says it's going to cost you $62 a year, is going to cost you 90 So it's just they don't understand that people buy these, apparently. So what happens is you have ethanol and a few other chemicals in the air that create an electronic um uh, an electrolytic action where copper and aluminum join. There's already one in existence, and if you'll notice, they tried to do their best to ground it away. But it's a static charge. That's the reason that they use rubber connectors on car hoses and all kinds of stuff, is to prevent that in an automobile. But if you look over here, you're going to see that I've got to build up an inch, one solid inch of water level in this, which submerges my entire core in water. What does that mean? That means the acidic things of pollen and dirt and dust and everything else and the electrolytic action of the condensate water containing the, the remnants of ethanol gasoline that actually leaves your exhaust pipe as water evaporates into the air but is a, uh, but is a molecule that will destroy your stuff. If you don't drain the water out, these things... They start plugging up. So what good did it do to spray a little water and spit a little water through there to make it more efficient if you plug up one quarter of the whole thing after owning it for a year? What good did that do? So their design is actually probably funded by the power companies. So you get it and you plug it into a watt meter. Here we go. Let me give you a watt meter. You plug that thing into a watt meter and you're like, oh, my God. That's, a, that's unbelievable. And now we'll plug it back into a watt meter and you figure, oh, hell, it must be wore out. No, it was designed bad. They're all designed bad. RV air conditioners take the cake in that design, and there's no excuse for it. It's because the public <laughs> accepts it. So I'm going to go into this here in just a second, into this video. Didn't want this to be long, but I wanted to start out by having you understand that you've been scammed, and we're going to work on showing you, making sure here you can safely, like I'm going to do in this video coming up right now, drain this crap out. And then what you want to do is you want to occasionally use low pressure water hose and rinse it from this side where it would be open to the public, say, and flush it out. Okay, when the water's not built up in here, it don't corrode this out. It don't get splashed up and vaporized up into your electronics because if you don't know, it's kind of open to the world so it doesn't 
damage what you paid your money for. Let's go over here. I'm going to get that show. Hey everybody, I am showing you one of these little small air conditioners. Now there's a limited amount of models that you can use to make a through the wall air conditioner. Now in this one's case, you're looking for on average above four inches, okay? Of space between your workable areas of your air conditioner. Now in this one's case, I'm working with about five. So the average house is roughly about five inches now so this will work in what's called a two by four stud wall two by four inch stud wall because they're with the finish on the outside they're really only about four and a quarter total this video here is going to be explaining how to help drain an air conditioner now i've taken this one apart because one of the steps of working with it to make drainage in the air conditioner and that's what we're working with here. And if y'all want to know what this one is, this is a super, super low wattage and good flow air conditioner. So it's made by Hire. And there's only certain models that are like this that have a compressor that uses only about 350 watts of electricity, which is impressive. It'll run on the power inverters very well. Now, this one here, I'm going to open it up here. Kira, hold this camera. And I'm going to take the cover off. Now, one of the things that you want to make sure that you do is you want to make sure that when you remove the screws, because they can be different screws. So I'm going to show you. These are two that's from this side of the air conditioner that went here and here. Now, inside of these air conditioners, a big issue with a lot of people that they don't realize is that you just can't drill a hole. I want you to look. You see that? You're going to hit copper. You're going to hit something. You're going to hit the core. Now... The screws are specific length, and they're also specific makeup. So these are the screws from the other side. Here, let me get one from that side there. And you'll notice a lot of people do this. They'll take these apart, and they'll have a whole pile of screws, and they'll be like, uh, what I do? Okay, look at the difference. It might not be significant to you, but based on the gauge of metal or what needs to be closed, you may make sure that you keep your screws separated. So I have those over there. And then back here in the back, I have the ones that came off the back. The ones that came off of the face plate is right there. And then this one is special. It's really different. You notice it doesn't have any starter in it. And it's the one that goes right up here in the top of the cabinet. So you want to keep your oddball ones separated so you'll have an idea what they do. Now, um, if you're going to make a drainage hole in your air conditioner, one of the things that you have to do is you have to make sure that you're not going to hit anything behind that. It's very difficult to do if you're trying to look through this cabinet, see? Now, you see that there's a screw there, but that don't mean a lot. You see how short they are. One of the problems that I get a lot, so I work on air conditioners, and uh, mainly RV units, but because I have certification for gas, I work on all of them. One of the things that people will do is they'll take a drill bit, and now you know your um, your elders of the world, they have drill stops that clamp onto this, but that's not what everybody has, and sometimes you can't even find them anymore. But you'll take a drill bit like this, and they'll just push on it, and it'll shoot through, and then they'll hit things inside. I've received air conditioners, quite a few that have holes right there in the copper tubing where people were tired of the water buildup in their air conditioner and it was foaming out the edges and all the modern air conditioners are built this way. This is more government idiocy that caused this because in their claim, it's going to be more efficient if you're slapping around water, blowing it against your core. Now, if you live in a city or if you live in, well, just about anywhere nowadays, um, ethanol gasoline creates a certain type of acidic pollution that they don't tell you about. But your air conditioner picks it up in the humidity as it fills this right here. So all your condensate water that fills up this air conditioner rots them out. Even worse is what it does to aluminum. So you can look in the bottom of your air conditioner and you'll notice how nasty and dirty that is and grimy. Well, that's because of that. And then they sell you, and then they sell you a new cleaner for it too. But you can solve all that. Believe it or not, your air conditioner is less efficient slapping around water because it takes more amperage to push that water around than it does having no water in there at all. 
But just like everything else they tell you is good for you, it's typically going to hurt you. So government people are just some of the dumbest people on the planet. And the reason they work for government is because, well, nobody else will hire them. So I'm going to show you exactly how you're going to go about putting a hole in here without having to do too much research or effort. So you can see I'm looking at roughly half of an inch to three quarters of an inch of clearance here. Well, I don't want to shoot a drill bit through there, but I'm plenty willing knowing that the screw length that's used, let me take that off of there so you'll see, is similar, you see, to that one right there. And they always give you a, what's called five millimeters of clearance in almost everything that they build. And you'll see that here. Let me get a board here. I'll show you. You'll see that here. So I'm going to take this board. And you see that? Five millimeters of clearance. Oops. There we go. So you see that from here to here where the case connects? And that's from the electrical cover panel. We'll open that to show you that in another video where we're going to do the um, mounting the rivets of putting on the metal that will be the flange where this mounts through the wall. Okay. Now, you can spend the extra $200 and buy one that's called a <laughs> wall mount. And the only difference is... It doesn't have these perforations. This has a special hardware. So that's it. And we solved that by just closing those. But now I'm going to get into here. Kira's going to hold the phone here and I'm going to show you how to do this. Now you don't, now this is not, this is not a large enough hole being that it's barely an eighth of an inch. But I'm going to, what I did is I took a little indent. You're going to go real slow and let your self starter bit get a bite. And then you can drive it in, but don't try to drive it in all the way. Okay, now the second step is I'm going to change this out to another one, and it's going to be staged up. So this is going to be a 3 h driver, and using the 3 h driver, I've taken a 3 h metal roofing, come on over here, 3 h metal screw that has a self-starter. Now, we already know that by length, we don't want to go past one of these screws in their length. So we'll adjust this with a stack of washers. Just putting a stack of washers on there, and I'll grab a couple more. Because the only thing we're trying to make is the hole. We're not trying to make the threading. And this makes, until you get to the threads, that makes a perfectly nice, clean, a little bigger than 3 16 of a hole. So I'll take that, and I'll come over here, and she can film down through here. You can see both actions. Just, just pulse it to where it goes in to where you don't slip or hit anything. Now I'm going to spin it backwards to clean the hole. And then I'm going to let it come out. Now I have a drainage hole in the air conditioner. And now I have no more filth in the air conditioner. And it is now capable of removing the condensate Sorry, on its own. Now, if you wish to have a little condensate in there, that's fine. It's not going to hurt anything, but the goal is to allow the water to drain out. And these, these people who come up with these designs, they do it because of obsolescence, because they intend on selling you another one. Um, one of the other things I do is I seal up this box. Let me show you this with a light. This is just basic servicing. But when they put these air handler boxes together, they're just kind of a snap fit, a press fit. They don't seal. So if you wonder why you got ants or things coming out your air conditioner or centipedes or scorpions or whatever, roaches in some parts of the country, if you wonder, it's because that is not sealed. Here, I, I closed this up everywhere, but I left that open to show you. So you're going to see this. I'm going to take that light and you see that gap? That gap right there, I can put basically a nail through and what happens with that is it's the whole thing all the way around us like that. These are actually quite loose when they make them for window units and even all-in-one units for you know homes. So what you want to do is take some of this type of tape. This is a good quality tape here. This is fasten all, fasten tape, and this is a foil tape. So you'll order your foil tape. This has got a lot of uses, guys, tons of uses. So you might want to have you roll around. So it's foil tape very very aggressive and you're going to do what you can to seal it up now i also put the foil tape across the whole thing and the reason for that is that the uv will will degrade this so sun that comes in 
through the top of that vent there will degrade as much of this foam as it can reach. And then you have breakdown, it gets brittle, you'll have this funny, I don't know, like a uh, fuzz that comes out of it blowing into your house. But if you put the tape on here like this, like the manufacturers should do, they should pre-manufacture this with an aluminum actual part. In other words, foam should be molded in an aluminum shell. They're dumb. So <laughs> that's how it works. But you'll seal this up and it's all over. And you'll look over here. I'll show you here that over here, it's also partially, you'll see like a, this. that's all they did put was just a little foam sticker. But none of the back back here was sealed. See, none of it. Now, as the air blows from the blower, you see the blower in there? It doesn't create a vacuum that now sucks in outside air. It's more sealed, so you get more of a circuit where the air goes in, comes up, and back out cooler. So, which was more efficient? How they built it or what I just did? All right, guys, y'all be good. Be careful. Be sure you mark where your screws go, and don't overdrive them. They'll strip out. It's just sheet metal. All right, we're going to get this one modified for uh, through the wall. And if you own an RV and you're tired of the RV air conditioner drawing a massive amount of amperage. Soon I'll be doing a video showing you how to actually mount these, remotely mount this entire control system and make a dome kit for these. It's actually easy to do. Not, I don't know how soon, it'll probably be this fall, but y'all stay tuned, make them more efficient, make them drain, make them less filthy, they'll last longer. Y'all be good guys.